Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's Tools Day, we're gonna go back to the basics with a top 10 list, so let's get into it. guys welcome back and today for tools day I thought we'd go back to the basics and that is just talking about a simple square I've been asked to do this video multiple times and I always thought it was kind of you know probably not worth it there's a lot of videos out there on squares and their uses but yesterday I had a visitor at my shop Ian from Wisconsin a young eight-year-old boy and hopefully Ian you're watching this video you said you watch all the videos which I just I love and it really kind of got me here and made me start thinking about the content I produce and the fact that maybe it's not just gonna hit the professional level person, but a young person that in five years, 10 years, whatever it may be, is gonna be looking for that knowledge and YouTube is such a great place for the knowledge to basically rest and stay forever. And so I'm gonna go and do my own video on the square and that way it's a great place to find it. Hopefully from here till whenever, people will be able to reference this video when just getting going in the trades. But even you tradesmen that have been doing this for a long time, I got 10 uses of the square and you might learn something. So stick around and let's get right into number one. All right, so the first and most simplest use of a square is a simple square line or a 90 degree angle. And let's say you're just gonna make a cut on a board and you wanna make a perfect cut. You're gonna line up this edge here, which is a lip on the square, you can see, on your board, put it on your mark that you just measured, and you're gonna make a cut. Now that's your 90 degree cut, simple. Now the next thing that's just basically built into the square is the ability for a 45 degree angle. And you can basically line up your point here and now you've got a perfect 45. So that's the simplest use of a square, and that's number one. Now let's go to number two. All right, now with this being a nice, perfect 90 degree line from your lip that can ride on your material, it also allows you to use your square as a guide to make a nice square cut. Now, one of the things that I see people doing is running the square on the side facing them. I personally like to run it on the opposite side, and that is for two reasons. One, because I think it's easier to pull towards you and keep it locked in, but also the square will extend out past your material further, which allows you to get that saw base plate squared up and running true to the square versus if it's this way, you don't have as much meat on the material here to make sure you're running square. So once you have this locked into your location, you can make that perfect square cut. And I think that's a great tip. Let's go on to number three. Now, we've already determined that we can make a nice, perfect 90 degree line to your material. What if you wanna do some odd angle? Well, most squares also have all of the angles right here on the diagonal, the 45 degree mark. And what's great is here, we've got a pivot point. So if you want to make an angle, you're gonna set the square at that pivot point and just rock it till the desired angle. So let's say we wanna do 30 degrees. I'm gonna pivot it, I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna find my 30 degree line and I'm gonna line it up with the edge of my material, make my mark, and now right here, I've got a 30 degree angle and it's easy to see the advantage of that if you're gonna be doing rafters, which we'll get into later, but let's go to number four. All right, so now that you've got a 90 degree line, the other great thing about a square is that you've got all of these measurements that are up the 90 degree side and you can use them to make quick reference points. Let's say you're laying out a doorway or something on a wall plate. You can make a quick reference line and reference the, the cripple, the jack, or some of these squares are pretty cool. You've got, once your 90 degree mark is there, Got an inch and a half reference point there. This saves a step, not having to turn your square and make quick marks. And now you've got cripple jack, doorway, and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and go to number five. 
All right, now I told you I was going to talk about rafters, and uh, square is definitely a huge benefit to have when cutting rafters. And a lot of them are going to put this conversion chart here. So if you see that, sometimes it's hard to see, but this is a conversion chart from pitch to degrees. What's also nice is you don't have to know this all the time because most squares are going to have these numbers here, and you've got common and you've got hip valley. Now we're talking about common right now. I'll also get into that a little bit, but we won't go into too much depth on how to cut rafters, just so you understand that you can do it with the square here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a six, 12 pitch. And what that means is that the roof is going up six inches while it goes over 12 inches. So six inches of rise per one foot of run. So we've got our pivot point. Let's say we're gonna cut a rafter and we want a nice pitch so we get a plumb fascia. We're going to basically take our square and we're gonna rotate it till right here on the common is a six. So once the six lines up with the edge of your material, you can make your cut and now you have a six twelve pitch right there. And uh, the six is a 26 and a half. So basically what I was saying is you can come over here to the degrees, which we already learned, find 26 and a half and make your cut. Now, if you're doing valleys or hips, so it gets a little bit more complicated, you're gonna use this line in here. So you'll notice that if I'm making a 612 common rafter cut, I'm going out here, but whenever you get into a hip and valley, because of just trigonometry or mathematics, the angle is reduced and you're gonna use this 612 measurement for any hip and valley. But like I said, we're not gonna get into that. Let's just go ahead and go right into number six. All right, now for this next one, you'll notice a little bit of a difference between these two squares. This is a simple, cheap square, and it works great for marking 90s, 45s, and doing all of your angle pitch cut marks. But when it comes to things like scribing, you'll see this square has an opening in the middle with these points right here. Now these points, when you seat it up against your material, are gonna give you a, basically a scribe point here. So like if I stick my pencil right in this mark, it gives me a nice one inch line down my material, two inches. Now this square here has just a plethora of scribe marks. So I can scribe anywhere from basically three eighths of an inch all the way up to basically five and a half inches. And that allows me, let's say you've got a two by six, which is sitting here, and I need a two by four. Scribing is perfect way to get those perfect lines down your material, even if the material isn't perfectly straight. So you can't necessarily mark here, mark here, and snap a line on all lumber because it ain't perfect. But by scribing, it allows me, personally, I do this a lot, to make a nice perfect line all the way down the length of the material for whatever dimension I'm looking for and make that rip cut. So squares are great for making scribe lines. And let's go ahead now and get into number seven. All right, now let's say you've got an existing structure that's already built and you wanna know the angle of it. You can take your square, you can set it on your pivot point, And if you have a torpedo level, find where it is level and then you can reference either the degree mark or the common mark here for the common cut, which this is about set at a 10, 12 pitch or a 38 degree angle. And then you can get a nice plumb line. And obviously, yes, you could use your level to figure that out. Or if you've got a square that already has the bubble built into it, you can just do that with one less tool find your line, boom, good to go. All right, let's do number eight. All right, now this next one, uh, we're going back to a saw. Now these are out on the job site or wherever and they're getting banged around. You always wanna make sure that you're cutting basically perpendicular to your material. So that is where you can take a square that you know is square, you can set it down on your base plate and check your blade to be perpendicular to your base plate. Now, obviously that doesn't always happen, but it's just a nice little secondary use of the square to always check. You can do that with circular saws, table saws, and miter saws. All right, number nine. 
All right, now this next one might be a little far-fetched, but it's a good tip in case you ever need it. It's using a plumb bob, which is any sort of a weight here centered on a string. And what we're doing is, let's say you want a nice level line here and you don't have a level. First off, go get yourself a level. But if you don't, you can take your square, you can take that string right into your pivot line, and then all you're going to do is you're going to rotate your level, or sorry, your square, right until you hit that 45 degree mark. Now remember the bottom here, we've got all these 45 degrees. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a nice level line to hang that picture on your wall so it doesn't bother you for the rest of your life. Now let's go to number 10. All right, now for this last and final use of a square here, let's say you want to make a perfect circle or at least really close. It's more like a bush fix. You're out in the job site and you're cutting some siding and you've got to go through a penetration and you got your center mark of your circle. You're going to take a nail and let's say you're going to do a four inch circle for some uh, PVC coming out of the wall. You're going to mark your two inch, which is half the diameter which is gonna give you the radius of your circle. Set your square inside the groove, line up a nice scribe point here, and then you're just gonna rotate that sucker around. Make sure that your pencil is sharp enough to get actually all the way down. And I think you guys get the point. It's a nice way to make a quick circle pretty efficiently, and it's better than finding the nearest Coke bottle to make it. So there you go. All right, now, bonus tip, guys. Have you ever checked your square to make sure that it's actually square? It's very simple. All you're gonna wanna do is find a straight edge. You're gonna wanna line it up on that straight edge and make a mark on your 90 degree side. Now, all you have to do is basically just turn over your square come back in and line it up right here at the pivot point on your pencil line and make another pencil line. Now, this might seem crazy, but you wanna check this often because especially with aluminum squares, what happens is these get rounded over, they can get bent, they can get dropped, and it can change the way your square line actually uh, is. And honestly, is this gonna matter in most framing applications? Probably not, but it's always good to just double check, make sure that your square is square, and this obviously will get bigger and be more profound the bigger the material is or the longer that you're trying to make square. Those are the top 10 uses that I could think of how I use a square in my daily job out on the construction site. And hopefully it helps somebody. I know a lot of you might be laughing saying, we all know that Kyle, it's a square. Of course it makes a square mark. But to me, I think it's one of those things that I'm hoping I'm helping the next generation. I'm hoping I'm helping Ian when he grows up, become a good carpenter and learn tricks of the trade without actually making the mistakes first in order to learn them. So so whether it's a cheap square or an expensive square, the important part is that it's a priceless tool for every carpenter or really anybody that's working with any sort of material to make quick reference cuts, quick reference marks, and do some of the other oddball things that you never thought you maybe could use a square for. So appreciate the support. Make sure you guys go check out the current build series. It's going to end up being pretty epic, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks a lot.